What's up everyone, in this video we are taking one of LA's most unique guided tours into its haunted past. From the true story of how Blood Alley earned its name, to reports of an elderly woman floating in mid-air in Pershing Square, to the ghost of an actress seen driving her car down Hollywood Boulevard, this is the Haunted Red Line Tour. Let's take a journey. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Wild Card Journeys. I'm your host, Eric Garcia. And on this channel, I make videos about reported haunted locations, urban legends, and unusual natural phenomena. So if this sounds like your kind of fun, please consider subscribing. Now today we're going to be taking the Haunted Red Line Tour, hosted by the paranormal group Ghost Hunters of Urban Los Angeles, or Gula for short. Essentially, we'll be getting on the Red Line subway train and riding that from the historic Union Station all the way out to uh, North Hollywood. Now we're going to be getting, stopping off along the way at different areas so our guides, Connor Bright and Richard Carradine, can share stories of LA's paranormal history. Now if this sounds like a kind of tour you'd be interested in, all of the links to Google's social media will be listed below the screen. So until then, let's take a ride into the past. Without further ado, welcome to the heart of Los Angeles! Yeah. All right. Y'all, you guys watch Ghost Adventures? Yeah. Yes. So I'm sure you've heard of the Pico House before because Zach talks about it on the Ghost Adventures. <laughs> they go and visit with a bunch of horror film monster actors that now also have a paranormal group. So they come to the Pico House not to look for Pio Pico, but to look for the spirits of the Chinese massacre that took place all within the walls of the Pico House. I love ghost adventures those boys work very hard i i personally know the researcher on that show but oh boy did they get that story so wrong oh boy the yes there was a chinese massacre no it did not happen anywhere near the pico house it was also not the gang violence that they were told that the that zach describes happening what actually happened the true story behind this it really dates back to a very dark point in LA history. Now that I've set that stage a little bit better, I will talk to you about back in the day, LA only had six sheriffs. Six people in its entire police department. It was a wild west town. It was why one of these sheriffs happened to have been sitting in a saloon drinking a pint of beer when he heard a gunshot come off from go off from a nearby alley. This alley was known for its crime rate. So he's like, this is my chance, I can be a hero. He takes off and he runs into this alley. He sees a Chinese man bleeding out. He supposedly runs after the rest of the gang, chases them inside of a building. Once the sheriff runs inside the building, he is also shot. He stumbles out where a local vigilante decides to take matters into his own hands as well. This vigilante rounds up a posse of people. They storm this building and they start dragging people out. When all is said and done, there are 19 bodies that have been strung up along what is now the freeway. It was called Blood Alley for years because of this massacre. These were 19 Chinese men, including one very prominent doctor. The ghosts of these spirits, if the spirits don't haunt, they do not haunt the Pico House. They would probably haunt the freeway, which might explain Ellie's traffic problem. <laughs> that she 
continued to come once a week and wash all of her clothes and take them off back and forth for a very long time until eventually the woman stops coming. And then they hit the little gray area because of the LA Native seem, the LA citizens seem to have known what happened. They seem to have known that she passed away. So a lot of people speculate that she might have been murdered because she was not obeying these new rules that were set up around her. <coughs> they also speculate she might have been murdered because these people were very surprised a few weeks later when this old lady showed back up at the river to wash her clothes again. Even, she was so used to a routine that even in death, she still comes to wash her clothes at the LA River. The reason why this couple saw her floating several feet off of the ground is because when Pershing Square was built and everything was eventually settled, we actually took down the, the ground. It is several feet lower than it used to be. Kind of fun. <laughs> All right. That is it for this stop. Our next stop is going to be Hollywood and Vice. The second vehicle-related um, ghost story that happened here it happened to be that of Thelma Todd's phantom car. Thelma Todd is not a name that many people know. She was a... They call her a cheesecake blonde, which back in the day just basically meant you were slightly too heavy to be the blonde bombshell and a little bit too corny. And when I say slightly too heavy, I mean Thelma Todd. Like a lot of people back in the day loved to party. She liked to party. She had lots of ex-husbands. She had lots of lovers. She was tangled up with the mafia that ran Los Angeles at the time. And all of these different things led to a very interesting story. When one night, Thelma Todd came home very drunk. She, there's a little bit of gray area as to what happened. Shortly afterwards, she was found dead in her car. The official cause of death is accidental asphyxiation. <laughs> Supposedly, she had gotten very cold in the middle of the night and decided to curl up in her car in the garage because somebody wouldn't let her into her house. Right, look at the crime scene photos. That raises a few questions as to what might have happened. Thelma Todd has a lot of bruises on her body. She has mud on her shoes. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense for her to have had. She is bloody in places, and she's propped up in a very unusual position. This led to a bunch of different conspiracy theories as to what might have happened to Thelma. There's a lot of different things as to what might have happened to her. She was found dead a while after she had passed away. So there was a lot of gray area as to where she might have been from the leading up to her death. And then people would report seeing her even after she had supposedly died. Because Thelma Todd's own best friend reported seeing her here at the Hollywood and Vine intersection. Thelma's friend continues to go, I haunts at her, and Thelma still ignored me. She is sitting in her car with both hands on the wheel looking straight forward. She thought this was very odd, and it's also around this time that Thelma's friend noticed that Thelma had a mysterious passenger in her car as well. Unfortunately for Thelma and her friend, the next morning it was discovered that Thelma had passed away, and she was actually dead for hour. She was already dead at the time that her friend saw this phantom appearance of her car. We, this is the only time this vehicle was ever seen. We don't have any real explanation for as to why this might have happened. Maybe this happened a few short hours after Thelma had passed away and she was already retracing her death uh, rattle. Maybe Thelma wanted her friend to see this passenger in the car with her that might have been her own murder. We're not sure we don't have an answer. We'll never have an answer. But it's a fun story. So if your best friend ever ignores you in the car next to him, you should maybe give her a call, too. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Just some of the haunted history of old Los Angeles. Pretty cool, huh? I would like to give a special thanks to Richard Carradine and Connor Bright for allowing me to film a video of their tour. Be sure to check the links below for all of Gula's upcoming events and tours. I'm Eric Garcia. This is Wild Card Journeys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like below, comment, share with a friend, or better yet, hit subscribe and you can catch all of my videos on all these unusual topics. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the journey.